Hello there everybody. I just realized it's been almost a month since I showed you what's going on out here in the greenhouse with the aquaponics and everything. So, let's get started on that, shall we? Down there in the sump tank is the very last piece of the dirty aquaponics gardening experiment. A little cat mint is sitting in a little tiny pot of soil where the roots have totally trapped themselves in a whole bunch of pebbles and clay. It's kind of stuck in there now. Half tempted to pull it out, but it's doing so well. And then up here, a quick scan across the ice fishing sled. I've still got to get around to uh, turning the second one of these into a bed. But up here we have a cabbage. And those broccoli seem to be doing all right-ish, I guess. Slow growers. Down here I have a pea that sprouted. In point of fact, there were two, but I transplanted one of those. I'll show you that in a minute. Got some curry cuttings there. The sage is loving life. Look at that strawberry. There are little berries and flowers all over the place on this thing. Of course, no actual like proper fruit yet, right? But we don't have any pollinators, so that makes sense. Had to cut a couple off so far, but... Oh yeah, once things warm up, that's gonna be fantastic. Down here, looking all dwarfed beside it, I've got a little uh, Greek oregano cutting. Love the oregano, especially in the aquaponics. The spice in that is just insane. I love it. Here we have that new variety of kale whose name escapes me at the moment. I think it's often referred to as like dino kale, but I've got it as some sort of long L name. Down here, we've got the smallest of the three indigo rose tomatoes. I thought a couple of times it had died on me because it's gotten really cold, but I see suckers growing in there. So, not lost yet. Miles of turtle. And we've got some stuff going on here, trying to root for the uh, permaculture stuff. That'll be good. I need to keep one of these honeyberries for myself, but the rest of them can be planted out. And down here, we've got some charred seedlings. I was hoping for a little bit of color in there. Looks like they're all going to be red, such is life. The fish are doing great. I didn't bring the underwater camera out today though, so you'll just have to take that on faith. The blue bin we'll be looking at closely in the next couple of weeks, I think. It's starting to warm up. But you'll notice this area here looks rather different. You can explore that. Those garlic that I planted seem to be doing okay. The two on the left I think are doing a little better than the three on the right. But I'll take it. And then over here we have that other pea that shot up in the aquaponics. Transplanted it into the soil just to see if it would make it. Seems to be doing alright for now. And then I was tired of looking at uh, all of those pepper plants dying from the aphids in the house, so I brought them outside to look at them in a different environment. Um, so far, the cold nights haven't killed these off yet, but I don't see anywhere near as many aphids on them. They don't look terribly good, most of these peppers. They've been cut back and sprayed and abused. But now that they're out here, they're either going to live or die in the cold and the heat, you know, as a basic, but there's a lot of um, little critters in this greenhouse. And for the most part, I've intentionally just let them be because they kind of run around and eat other little critters in the greenhouse. For example, I stopped killing spiders in here quite some time ago. Now. I've already seen a couple of really little tiny striped spiders, well they look like spiders to me anyway, I'm not exactly an entomologist, um, making their way towards those plants and like I said, I already see less aphids. So if the cold doesn't kill them, the spiders and bugs will save them and uh, I'll still have a good start on the pepper crop, so that's actually pretty sweet. But just in case, I've got uh, you know way more seedlings going inside, still got lots of work I need to do there. Lots of things I'm trying to sprout and such. But anyway, we're in the greenhouse today, so let's just keep going with that, shall we? Underneath the reflection, four nice large goldfish there. 
Don't need too many of them to power this particular garden. They are dirty little fish. But, here's what they're managing to do for me. The wisteria hasn't come back yet, but neither has the one in the yard, so I'm not too concerned. Look at the willow cuttings. That is fantastic. So excited. Here we've got, uh, I believe that is a young cabbage in the bottom left, kale in the bottom right, and more Greek oregano in the top right there. Now, I've noticed something with the Greek oregano. That one there, and the one in the bottom of the shot here, are both the exact same plant mother. But the one with the much more sporadic watering, because I do it by hand, you know, two or three times a day whenever I happen to be in here, seems to be doing significantly better than the one that's uh, constantly submerged in the water there. So, here's a thought for the oregano growers out there. They do like it dry from time to time. But in the top of the shot here, you can see uh, the English mint seems to have survived just fine. Where's that oregano? Now sadly, the spearmint didn't make it. I don't know why I've still got it on the shelf here. We really need to get around to moving that. Put the willows up or something. The chocolate mint here is looking really rough, but I just pulled a whole bunch of stuff out of there, so it's kind of my fault. And here we have that lavender that in theory should have died a couple of times for a couple of reasons but now that I've put it over here and it's uh, getting more light and got a lot more air movement around it and not constantly soaked it seems really really happy so that's fantastic you may have noticed these tree branches here in the middle these aren't for the permaculture project this is just a personal property beautification thing these are from a flowering almond out front. We've really enjoyed watching it grow over the time we've been here, and uh, I'd like to take some with us when we go. It's really quite beautiful. It's just starting to get some of the flowers on it here. So assuming those blossom properly, you'll get to see those uh, a couple weeks at the most, I'd guess. Now here in the constant height bed, we've got, you know, kale here, it's doing all right. This cabbage in the back is not doing so great. And this pak choy has got to go. So I'll figure out something to plant in the side there. Not oregano, I guess. How are the strawberries doing? Look at that. Look at that. Ah, uh, you gotta love strawberries as spring approaches. They're the first things to show you that they really, really want to grow. And really, when you get right down to it, they're kind of hard to kill. I've got some strawberries out front. I'll show you in the next couple of days, because uh, I'm going to transplant them into the rhubarb bin. But they've been horribly neglected and abused, and yet they still live. And they're still showing fresh growth for spring. So that'll be in a different video, though. All right, I think that's it for this one, everybody. I want to uh, thank you for your time today. Hope you're having a wonderful one so far, and I hope it gets better from here. Thanks for watching.